Buccaneers have a second Super Bowl title in franchise history. The Lady have done it! They, did they it have again. gone back to back for the second year in a row! Nine hundred and seventy-three days since the last time we had the Tampa Bay Sneaker Soiree back in May of 2019. And finally, we get a chance to come together. I'm going to make a bold prediction. This is going to be the best Sneaker Soiree we've ever had. Who's ready for that to be? There's no doubt, these last two and a half years have presented some really unique challenges. Challenges that I don't think any of us could have ever fathomed before. These last two and a half years have taught us things, quite frankly, that we hope we never need to use again. But you know what these last two and a half years have also done? It's taught ourselves, as well as the entire planet, that nobody has the spirit of Team Tampa Bay. Am I right? Tonight is a celebration. It's a celebration of unprecedented success and unprecedented perseverance. But we need a co-host, somebody that's been doing this for almost every soiree and can help lead us through this program. So without further ado, let's give it up to Team Tampa Bay's born and raised and sneaker soiree MC, Sarah Walsh. Sarah, it's great to have you back. Thank you. It's great to be back. It's a, been too long. I know. A veteran of soirees, you know every single year we've got to come through with a theme. That's how we do it here. We've done a lot of themes. We've done Anchorman. We've done a newlywed game. We've done Back to the Future. So we need a theme for tonight. Well, I think there can only be one theme based off of this run that we've been on. And if you haven't guessed it yet, based <laughs> off of the letters over here or the letters over there or all these different telltale signs, let's unveil what this theme is. So we've got a trophy case. We've got some trophies in it already. We'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. We're gonna be filling the trophy case throughout the evening. Who else wants to see some more trophies in this trophy case? There's no way that we would be here tonight if it wasn't for a really special group of heroes. So it's only appropriate to kick things off by honoring a really special individual that represents those heroes. Let's take a look at our first honoring. When I walked into my unit, every single patient was on full life support. This unknown flu-like virus is spreading a global pandemic. Every age group, every race, every ethnicity. I was like, all right, it's here. I started at Tampa General Hospital in 2013, and I'm currently the nurse manager of the medical intensive care unit. Growing up, I had two very influential female role models in my life. My mother, she's actually a dietitian. The other female figure is my grandmother, who was a nurse in World War II. She really inspired me to be a nurse. I was excited to finally be the leader on the unit. The thing I was most excited about was watching them develop into the best nurses that they could be. Can you just show me that last note from Nefra? So I was sitting in what we call safety huddle, looking at the map of the virus spreading, and it was when it hit the United States. I was like, this is getting real now. 
After we got our first patient, that's kind of when we decided, okay, it's going to be your medical ICU that we're gonna convert into the COVID ICU, and that happened overnight. I have a relatively young team, and everyone was in a little bit of shock. It was really hard at that time. We lost a lot of lives. Caring for these patients is emotionally, physically, and mentally exhausting. We hit over 400,000 deaths due to COVID-19. It really changed the way we practice nursing and it put a lot more on our nurses. Families can't be at the bedside with the patients. It's the nurse that's there holding the patient's hand when they're passing away. It's the nurse that's there facilitating FaceTime calls with the family. It's really the nurses that are there the most. The NFL announced today that 7,500 vaccinated healthcare workers will be invited to attend Super Bowl 55. Hi, Susie. I just assumed that he was maybe going to be presenting a few Super Bowl tickets for some of my team members, but Derek Brooks surprised me and was also on this Zoom call. You, along with uh, two other people, will be honorary captains, and you'll have an opportunity to come out on the field and participate uh, in the toss. <laughs> we have all endured so much this year. When I step onto the field on Super Bowl Sunday, I'm gonna take a minute to recognize all the lives that we've lost to COVID-19 this year. It's absolutely amazing that the NFL is taking the time to honor everything that we have been through. Kansas City is a visiting team. They get to call the toss. They have called heads. Susie, toss the coin. It is heads. Kansas City has won the toss, and they would like to defer their choice to the second half. First of all, I would like to thank all of you. Uh, the community outreach and support during this pandemic has just been overwhelming. Um, while I am accepting this award and this recognition, this isn't really about me. This is about the hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers out there and their commitment and their courage to continue showing up each and every day to provide care for our patients. Thank you, Tampa Bay, for your support. Um, cheers, and I hope we all have a great evening. Well, now, Susie, 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 I know you haven't been to soirees before. We hope you, you come back, but we're notorious for doing surprises as part of this. So I want to welcome the president of Mainsail Development, Joe Collier. He's a good friend of us that has a quick surprise for you as well. Susie. We know it's been a uh, rough couple of years. I can't think of anybody else that deserves a vacation like you. So we want to give you a vacation in one of our hotels over at Dunedin, the Fenway Hotel. You're going to have a great weekend. You can take Melanie over there and have a great time over there on behalf of us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, up next. All right, all right, all right, all right. I have sat here all night long, listening to every single accolade and everything else in between. You called out Derek Brooks as the only person in Tampa with a school named after him. Lies. I got a school named after me. You called out Drew McIntyre as the favorite WWE superstar of the Tampa Bay community. He is. Lies. He don't even leave in Tampa. He lives in St. Pete. <laughs> and he's from Scotland. Now, I'll be damned if I'm going to sit here all night long and you ain't going to have no mention of Titus O'Neil. And you know, I knew you was going to do something like this because every single year for the last 10 years, he has always found a way to be ridiculous. We're sitting up here, you got this WWE title up here. I helped you bring WrestleMania here, and you didn't even mention me. 
I hosted WrestleMania. Now, we've talked tonight about how the sneaker soiree is all about surprises. Oh, so... And there's no doubt, okay. I, even I have to admit, I hate to admit it. Okay. Even I have to admit this guy has been an incredible advocate for our community. So, who thinks this guy, I mean, every single day he's got to do something for the community. I mean, it's nonstop. So, I will say you have been a fantastic community advocate. It's about damn time, Rock. It's All right. About time. One hour into the show, and I so, appreciate it. With that in mind, mm -hmm. and with the fact that we love surprises, I'm here to present the Tom McEwen Community Advocate Award to somebody that is not you. Excuse me? <clears throat> I said, that is not you. It's a Community Hero Award. I know, and there's somebody that's more deserving. So why don't what we... What in the that's blue right. hell is going on in Tampa, Florida? Let's take a look at, at yeah, who, who the hell this, is this year's Tom McEwen Community Advocate Award winner actually is. Tom McEwen was the Tampa Tribune sports editor from 1962 to 1992 and then a popular columnist for the paper until shortly before his death in 2011. McEwen is credited with helping to establish the sports landscape in what is now Tampa Bay. The Tom McEwen Community Advocate Award is given each year to a Tampa Bay citizen who has demonstrated outstanding support and advocacy for sports in Tampa Bay. This year's award winner is Bamitra Simmons, the president and CEO of the Tampa Bay Partnership and a trailblazer and pioneer of helping to bring sporting events and opportunities to our area. When you mention the name Bamitra, like everyone gets excited. You'd be incredibly hard pressed to find someone who cares more about the Tampa Bay region than Bamitra. And that's why it makes perfect sense that she's tonight's winner of the Tom McEwen Community Advocacy Award. The definition of an advocate, it's someone that is fighting for a cause. You think about a person that is fighting day in and day out to create opportunities for them to put their names in rooms that they have not yet stepped foot in. The only person that you think about that's doing that is Bamitra. Bamitra has been advocating for the people of Tampa Bay for as long as I've known her and even longer. Bamitra is an amazing community leader for a number of reasons. She is involved in, I think, every event that we have here in the community, and she has led on so many issues. Bamitra Simmons relocated to Tampa Bay in 2011 after falling in love with the area while attending the 2008 NCAA Women's Final Four. She loved it so much. She loved the experience here that she said if a position ever opened up here, she would want to do it. And just like in true Bimitra fashion, within three years of that event, she was relocated here, she was the president of a bank, and she was already making a big impact on our community. Since then, Bimitra has channeled her love of basketball in the support of campaigns to host the tournament here. She was a significant supporter of the 2015 NCAA Women's Final Four, and was an integral part of the first ever All Women Advisory Committee for the 2019 NCAA Women's Final. What makes Bimitra such a great community advocate is her passion for our hometown. Whether it's walking in a room with the NCAA to a room with the NFL, there's nobody that does a better job helping sell our community and talk about the strength of it. Bimitra has always strived to serve in the interest of others. She's been focused on those who need her help the most in particular, her work with Community Tampa Bay, advocating to end discrimination of all forms in our region. You think about how much we've grown over the last 10 years, and certainly Bimitra has been a big part of that, which is following in the great footsteps of people like Tom McEwen and the Levy brothers and so many others. I know that many of you feel as grateful and fortunate as I am to have Bimitra here in Tampa Bay, making our region a better place each and every day. Thank you so much. I am uh, deeply uh, honored and a bit overwhelmed uh, to receive this. Uh, I'm a military kid, so I've never had a hometown until I moved here. 
And uh, without a doubt, Tampa Bay is my forever home. I couldn't do the work that I do in this community uh, without the, work, uh, the love and support of my lovely wife, Abeba. Uh, she allows me to do all the things I do in the community, so thank you so much. And I just want to give a quick shout out uh, to uh, family uh, that are friends, that have become family. Uh, Dr. Scholes, Sally D, Eric Bryan, thank you guys for being with me tonight. And I, I hope that we get a chance to keep winning in Champa Bay. And thank you guys for this award. Thank you. Thanks, Mamicha. Congratulations. You're far more deserving than Titus. Um, I do want to say, Titus, we joke a lot. You're a dear friend. But you are one heck of a dad. I know your sons, TJ and Titus, are here tonight as well. And they're incredible young men. And uh, we can't wait to see their bright futures as well. Let's give a round of applause to Titus O'Neill. As we come together for the first time in, in quite some time, we want to pay special homage and take a moment to reflect on some of the previous award winners who are no longer with, with us. We ask that you spend some time in reflection uh, in moments of silence as we watch the video screens. Now, each of those individuals that you saw on the screen have meant so much to our community. They all had a sense of giving back to the community. And to help introduce this year's In the Community video to pay tribute to all of the good that's happening in our community by our sports community, please welcome the senior manager of marketing operations for Tampa International Airport, Danny Cooper. Uh, we, as an airport, exist to connect our community, both domestically and internationally. And when we do that, we bring the community together in ways that you might not imagine. So we're happy and proud to present this evening a video that highlights the community interaction with the franchises and teams in our community.
Uh, but first of all, we, we both would like to uh, uh, congratulate everybody here, the Rays, the Lightning, Bucks, Rowdies, USF, uh, all the teams, man. You make us all proud. And, and, and I'm sure Pete will tell you the same thing. When I played back in my day, everybody always talked about Tampa. What's so great about Tampa? Tampa this, Tampa that. And uh, we both know how special Tampa is. So uh, we're very happy to be here tonight representing Tampa. Uh, so first of all, Pete, growing up in Tampa, Little League Baseball, Plant High School, University of Florida, New York Mets. Talk about your ride real quickly about how you got there and some of the issues you've gone through uh, to get there. If I had a nickel for every time someone told me I wasn't good enough or you're just, you just don't cut it, I'd be a really rich guy. And for me, I'm, I'm a very stubborn and competitive individual. And uh, I, like, I like to prove people wrong. And it's, uh, it's something that I just, I just don't want to fail. And I always want to be the best. And for me, it, to be from Tampa, uh, to, to continue the tradition of, of being a champion, it's really, really special. And I feel like, for me, uh, growing up here, I mean, baseball is, is one of the most deep-rooted traditions here in Tampa, going way, way back. There's so many amazing ball players. I mean, obviously, Tino. but. Uh, if you go around every single high school, there's, there's big league players, all-stars, and even Hall of Famers. I mean, for me, I'm super proud to be uh, an, al an alumni of Plant High School uh, from, the, from the great Wade Boggs, so it's special to be a part of uh, the baseball tradition here in Tampa. We created our, our foundation, our nonprofit, um, uh, home, called Homers for Heroes because obviously my thing, I hit home runs, but ultimately, um, yeah. <laughs> But ultimately, we wanted to make a difference, and we wanted to spread um, uh, positivity and, and just help organizations that um, organizations that are heroes in their own individual communities. And so, what we want to do is um, is just continue to help out people who who need help. We want to be an ally and uh, pretty much use our platform uh, to bring good, and uh, not just not just New York, but here in Tampa as well. The last two seasons have been pretty phenomenal. Back-to-back -back AL East crowns. That is not an easy division to do that in. A trip to the World Series, a 100-win season. Put it into perspective for us. How proud are you of this organization? It's the organization uh, beyond proud. It, uh, to do it in the American League East, that's always the most defining part of this for me. Uh, the big part is really just the, the consistency of the success that we've had all along. Uh, we've been to the playoffs now three consecutive years, 90 plus wins or 600 plus uh, base percentage baseball for four years. Um, and it's really all due to the people sitting here at this table right now. Uh, we've, got, we've been named the organization of the year in baseball for two by um, Baseball America for two consecutive years. And we do believe that the success is sustainable and we expect to have success going forward. And you're not just having success with the Rays. You purchased the Rowdies three years ago. They have had back-to-back -back great seasons, making the USL championship twice. How have you enjoyed your time juggling both soccer and baseball now? Yeah, it, they overlap, right? So, uh, and, and there aren't as many games as soccer, so it's much easier to follow. I go back to the uh, 70s. My first experience with soccer was with the uh, North American Soccer League and Pele and Chinalia, and uh, I don't remember seeing the Rowdies at that point in time, but I knew of them as a, as a, as a team. And then to be able to uh, purchase the team a few years ago, we have incredible leadership there as well with Lee Cohn um, and our coach, Neil Collins, as well, and they've just done an amazing job. Uh, it's sort of kismet, you know, I like to think that they brought a lot to the Ray side of the house and the Rays have brought a lot to the Rowdy side of the house as well. And like every other Michael, I got a question for you coming off of some great news this week. You recently announced contract extensions for your entire coaching staff. Why was that such a big priority for you? Well, for us, we preach and talk a lot about Team USF. Uh, you know, I, I know some of our the professional GMs and, and uh, presidents here in the house usually make fun of me because they only have one head coach to work with. I got 14. Uh, and and when, you get a, when you get a chance to, to do that and know that what, we've been through this, this pandemic and working and putting our student athletes first and having success on the court and fields, uh, that's when you know you've got something really special. And uh, 
We're tackling these sea of change in, in college athletics. You've got not only the pandemic, you've got NIL, you've got uh, uh, transfer portals that are hitting new levels. And we're navigating it together at the team while all of our head coaches are basically department heads of their sport. Uh, together we navigate these waters and uh, that's, what, that's what it's going to take for us to meet, reach our full potential at USF and I believe in stability and, and patience to get where we're going to go. Speaking of priorities, Will, uh, one of your first tasks as the chair of the trustees was to unveil a pretty monumental announcement and vision and that's for an on-campus stadium. W what is your perspective there in, in trying to help make that happen. I know if yeah. anybody can help do it, it's you, and it's such a phenomenal initiative. Well, thank you, Rob. Like, first, we have great partners at the Tampa Sports Authority and the Glazier family and Raymond James, so we, we, we love playing there. But at the end of the day, we're playing in somebody else's home. And the USF students and the alumni and our players and this community and USF deserves to be able to play football games on their home campus, on their, in their stadium. And so I'm just, I'm here to tell you, we're building a great, what, what, what Coach Scott's building is gonna be a great football program. We're building the foundation for a great football program. And we are also gonna be building a world-class football stadium on our campus, mark it down, it's gonna happen. We need your help, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> Vinny, you guys got it all started back in 2004 with the Lightning's first cup. What are some of your favorite memories from that time? Um, we were kind of in a different, uh, I want to say a different mode because I think, I feel like since Mr. Vinick, the team's been unbelievable. So for us, it's kind of very different. Uh, we were very, very bad my first couple years. <laughs> uh, it was tough, so we kind of built from uh, from scratch, I guess, and and uh, you know acquired a few guys, and we got a good little uh, bunch of veteran guys to come and help us out. Uh, guys like me and Brad Richards. So uh, I'd say my favorite memories are just that whole you know struggle at first, but then like starting to feel that you could. That you're getting better every year, and then obviously in 04, winning the cup was uh, was pretty incredible. So uh, it's a long time ago, but every time I see that cup, it's uh, it just brings back a lot of good memories. Steve, we know what you have been up to, being part of back-to-back -back Stanley Cup wins. You know, some people work their entire lives, right? You just want to win one, and now you guys, you've gotten a little greedy there. You've done it twice, which uh, nobody here has any problem with that. What has this incredible run been like from your standpoint? Well, uh, as I like to say to our team, it's been the best of times and the worst of times, which is Mark Twain. I didn't really say it. Um, you know, you think about what we've gone through the last two years, not only uh, as an organization, but an entire community. It's been the best of times and the worst of times. And when I think back to, you know, when we won that first Stanley Cup and, you know, like Vinny, I'm from Canada too, and you grow up on a pond wanting to win a Stanley Cup in front of a whole crowd. The first cup I won, I was sitting in, on my couch with my dog by myself watching our hockey team play Dallas in Edmonton in an empty arena. So it wasn't exactly like we thought, but uh, it was an incredible uh, moment to win the cup. Uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges that's gone on since then to, to get our buildings back open. Uh, I know more about HVAC than I really should <laughs> these days. Um, and, and, and putting plexiglass up all over the place in the building. But really, we haven't gone through the challenges that this community have gone through. We've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup uh, champions. And I think what's really been important is that we've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. The Bucks have won the Super Bowl. USF has won a bunch of championships. The, the Rays and the Rowdies have gone to the finals. We've galvanized the community. We've brought people together and we've united people. And that's what sports and entertainment does. You unite people. And during these times, it's been, it's been an incredible run for this community and it's pulled everyone together. What was it like having your team not only become the first team to ever play at home in a Super Bowl, but then also win it. I, the whole thing was, it was surreal because, you know, when you, as you know, when you're trying to get a Super Bowl, 
everybody says, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, when, when you get that Super Bowl, we're gonna be the first team to play in our home Super Bowl. And everybody says that, it never happens, okay? And then we, we got the Super Bowl, and then to actually be in your own, you know, to, win, to be in the Super Bowl in any city is tough. So when the two of them merged together, it's like Haley's Comet. I mean, it happened last year and it was unbelievable. And uh, it was such a pleasure to be able to be in Tampa for our home Super Bowl because when you're normally in a Super Bowl, you maybe have a couple thousand of your fans at the game. And we got to celebrate this with the whole week and the game itself with the entire community. And everybody could be outside, everybody could enjoy it, all the Bucks fans were there. And it was, just, it was very special, very special. Up next, to present the Freddie Solomon Moral Courage Award, please help me welcome, on behalf of the DeBartolo Family Foundation, Lannis Robinson, nephew of the late Freddie Solomon, who is also going to be joined on stage by Freddie's wife, Dee Solomon. It is always a pleasure to present this award on Freddie's behalf. He will most certainly be proud of the next person we are honoring tonight, who has truly demonstrated passion, perseverance, and moral courage. Hello, I'm Paul Kennedy, and it's my privilege to introduce this year's Freddie Solomon Moral Courage Award, presented by the DeBartolo Family Foundation. Over the last 10 years, Sonia Bryson Kirksey has become the voice of Bolts Nation. She is synonymous with Lightning Hockey Night. Sonia brings it every night, eh? Oh, every time. Yep. Sonia is so special to Lightning because, um, you know, she's just, she's just part of the team. It's part of the tradition of, of going to a Lightning game is listening to Sonia sing the national anthem before the game. I think she gets the loudest ovation of all of us when she's uh, ready to sing. Maybe Vazzy is close, but um, she's just so ingrained in the Lightning and it's just part of the tradition that we listen to her sing. It's, 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 uh, it's what makes her so special. However, in July of 2021, just days after the Lightning captured their second consecutive Stanley Cup championship, Sonia tested positive for COVID-19, despite being vaccinated, and like many with underlying conditions, in her case, multiple sclerosis. This Delta variant quickly took over. Sonia was admitted to the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital on July 16th with a 103 degree fever. And soon after, she would be placed on a ventilator in the intensive care unit. For 29 long days, with every breath, Sonia battled COVID with the same fierce determination and commitment that her 20 years of service in the United States Air Force had ingrained upon her, armed with the knowledge that the Bolts Nation was behind her all the way. Fan support was unbelievable. I mean, not only everyone in our organization, but the entire Lightning Bolt Nation was there supporting her, whether it be on social media, get well cards, people calling our offices, Wanted to make sure that uh, uh, our beloved Sonia was, uh, was doing well. Yeah, it was dicey, but at the same time, we also knew that Sonia is just encased in determination. It didn't feel like she was ever going to not come back. We always thought or we prayed that she would, but somehow we knew she would find a way to get off the mat, as it were, and uh, get back on the ice with us. And our prayers were answered. Finally, on August 13th, with her husband Jimmy at her side, Sonia did what thousands during the pandemic sadly could not do. She made the slow but steady walk home. And on opening night, October 13th, after the Lightning's 2021 Stanley Cup championship banner was raised to the Amelie Arena rafters, before a national audience, Sonia's emotional journey came full circle, living a moment she once feared she would never experience again. Now to honor our great nation, please join us in welcoming back to home ice retired U.S. Air Force Technical Sergeant Sonia Bryson Kirksey as she performs our national anthem. 
Sometimes in life, we're tested, not to show our weaknesses, but to discover our strengths. That's the true definition of courage. And that's Sonia Bryson Kirksey. When I found out I would be receiving the Moral Courage Award, I was immediately humbled because I know the biggest fight of my life wasn't won by myself. The faith of my village helped me to be able to stand here this evening. Last summer, I contracted COVID-19 Delta variant, but because of my immunity issue, I quickly became very ill. I spent 30 days in the hospital, including eight scary days in the ICU. My husband, children, sister, and our parents could not be at my bedside. So at first, the isolation made me feel sad and alone. But after about a week, <laughs> I realized that not only was my immediate family going through this with me, but so was my Tampa Bay family. I would like to publicly thank the entire medical team at James A. Haley who kept me on this planet, especially the nurses that encouraged me every single day, so I know exactly what you mean. Thank you to my husband, Jimmy, <laughs> who stepped way out of his comfort zone and kept everyone informed while dealing so valiantly with my absence, even though he ate junk food for 30 days. <laughs> Lightning General Manager Julian Brisois said a few months ago that on average we live for about 30,000 days, but we only remember a few hundred of those days. Today is one of those days I will definitely remember. To the Vinix and my beloved Tampa Bay Lightning family, thank you for everything you do, great and small, to make me feel special. Finally, thank you Tampa Bay Sports Commission for this wonderful award, and thank you Team Tampa Bay and all those beyond this city for pushing me to lean into my faith and fight my best fight. Thank you. You know, there aren't many people who get to enjoy our local sports fans here in Tampa Bay the way that we do. And they really are the heartbeat of our local sports community. And speaking of the heartbeat of our sports community, we'd be so honored to have Leroy Selman Jr. and Claybra Selman join us on stage to help introduce this year's Leroy Selman Lifetime Achievement winner. Um, my father would be especially proud of uh, tonight's recipient. Uh, Tony Dungy and his family have done so much uh, for our community and uh, we are so gracious and so blessed to have him in our community. And uh, we'll just like to take a, a moment to draw our attention to the screen to uh, see just how much impact he's had. With the first pick in the 1976 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selected defensive tackle Leroy Selman as the team's first ever college draft selection. Selman made an immediate impact on the field and became one of the Bay Area's most beloved figures off of it. While playing, he was a perennial contender for the NFL Man of the Year and the Byron Wizard White Awards, both of which recognize a player's humanitarian service. After his eventual Hall of Fame career came to a close, Selman remained highly visible in the community following his retirement. Occupying a seat on the Tampa Bay Sports Authority and taking on the responsibility of building the University of South Florida's football program from the ground up. The Leroy Selman Lifetime Achievement Award is bestowed to an individual who demonstrates a lifetime's worth of incredible support for the Tampa Bay sports community. This year's recipient of the Leroy Selman Lifetime Achievement Award is Coach Tony Dungy. The lessons I learned from him were invaluable. They're not only football lessons, they're life lessons. Like a father figure, somebody that you didn't want to let down, someone that you wanted to work hard for, someone that showed us how to do the right thing, not just between the lines. You showed us faith, family, football in that order. It was more than just football for me. He taught me how to be a man. So what Coach Dungy 
was and still is as a person is consistency. Probably the four most powerful words in the Tampa Bay organization, no excuses, no explanations. And we bought into that day in and day out, whether we was doing things on a football field, but more importantly, doing things off the field. He wasn't just a coach in football, he was a life coach. He taught life. He taught to be responsible, the commitment, putting both feet forward in anything you do. And when you said you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it. He encouraged us all to be out in the community and really follow his example in really giving yourself to the service of those around you. Coach would come in and, and say it's important for you to be in the community. And if you're gonna make a commitment to the community, you're going to, you know, live up to it. He structured that for us. He implemented it. That was the way of life when we were, when we were here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We were going to be a part of our, our community. And he said that, you know, the community supports us and we should definitely support the community because without them, there's no us. Coach Dungy embodies the Lifetime Achievement Award for what he's done for, for others. I'm blessed to know him so well and understand him and have him mentor me to be where I'm at today. I'm truly humbled in his presence. <laughs> in a way, you almost don't feel worthy of being around him at times because he's, he's so good and so honest and so true to his beliefs and his convictions and his faith. You're just humbled in his presence because of all the things that, that he is. It's about serving others and being a servant leader. I can't thank anyone more deserving than you, Coach Dungy to be recognized with the Lee Ross Selman Lifetime Achievement Award. This is uh, really, really hard to believe. Um, it's almost exactly 26 years ago that uh, my family and I came here. And 26 years of my life, I didn't really realize how special this Tampa community was in the area of sports and just being here tonight and kind of reliving a lot of the memories but seeing these organizations uh, not only win win championships and win games but what they're doing uh, to make Tampa a better place to live it's just really really amazing Brian mentioned his dad Malcolm and I had about four or five job interviews before I got the Bucks job. And everybody thought that my way of doing things wasn't the right way, it wasn't gonna work in the NFL. I talked about building honor and integrity and how I wanna do it with our players and what we were gonna to do to be part of the community. And I had a couple of owners tell me it wouldn't work. And I interviewed down here and I told Malcolm how I thought I was gonna do it. And he said, that's exactly how I've raised my family and that's what I want to do and that's what I want us to be and it was just the right mix at the right time and I'm so grateful that he hired me and gave me an opportunity to to be part of the Buccaneers organization and be part of what they've done over the years and then you saw those guys on the video um, I, I think that's more of what I'm all about than anything to see Rondé Barber and Derek Brooks and Mike Allstott and so many of these other guys make their home here and, and be part of things. I, I'll never forget my first meeting with the team saying, you know, we, I'm here as your new coach. We're here to win the Super Bowl. But if that's all we do, it won't really matter. We've got to make Tampa a better place to live 24 seven, not just from one o'clock to four o'clock on Sunday, but every day that you're here, we've got to be winners off the field. We've got to be great role models when. And then to win a Lifetime Achievement Award named after Leroy Selman. I mean, are you kidding me? To be talked about in that type of reverence that means something special to somebody from Tampa, Leroy Selma. Gosh, what an honor, what a thrill. I, I just have to thank the Lord that I had this opportunity to be here and be part of this special community. I thank my family uh, for all they put into it. I thank 
you, everybody here in Tampa. It's been an amazing 26 years, and I'm so proud to be a, what do you say, a Tampian? <laughs> Thank you very much. Coke Florida is your local Coca-Cola bottler. And as the local Coca-Cola bottler, we strive every day to make a positive impact in the communities that we serve all across the state. But there's no doubt this next young man and, the, and his relentless passion for never giving up continue to serve as an inspiration for us all. Let's catch up with the finisher. One word rings truest when talking about our friend Gavin Lambert, heart. In 2011, at the age of five, Gavin was diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia, a neuromuscular disease that infects the entire body. But Gavin is one of Friedrich's ataxia's toughest competitors. He has never seen himself as a victim of FA. Instead, Gavin treats each day as an opportunity, a chance to get better and be who he's always been, a finisher. We first learned of Gavin and his extraordinary story in 2013 as the then seven-year-old competed in and finished the inaugural Tampa Bay Kids Triathlon as he was spotted relentlessly racing for the finish line. His story from that day grew and the community took notice. In 2014, Gavin and his family were invited to the fourth annual Tampa Bay Sneaker Soiree. There, Gavin showcased his story to the world Dee and I are honored to present this year's Freddie Solomon Moral Courage Award to a true fighter and ultimate sports enthusiast, Gavin Lambert. He quickly became the face of perseverance. His story touched everyone, from sports franchises to college athletic teams, local media, and the general community alike, each sharing a special connection with Gavin and providing a platform to tell his endless mission of finding a cure for F.A. Right. Since the sneaker soiree, Gavin continued to be a regular attendee of the Kids Triathlon, and in 2015, event organizers unveiled the Gavin Lambert finish line. The triathlon also designated the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance its first ever beneficiary, donating a portion of the proceeds to help find a cure. Now a 16-year-old sophomore at River Ridge High School, he is living the typical teenage life, all while continuously refining his mission of raising awareness of F.A. Gavin has endured four spinal fusion surgeries and now needs wheelchair assistance, but that won't erase the smile he takes into each day and the effort he demonstrates with every new opportunity. That last minute where he is just completely wiped out, worn out to the core, and still going is such a huge motivation for everyone, especially a mother, which makes me want to stand there and cheer him on and bust through barricades if I have to to make sure I capture that moment and show him down the road how important it was to finish.
saw in that video, you hold up your driver's license. And from what I understand, it's pretty expensive to get the adaptive driving lessons that you need in order to be cruising around town like every other 16 year old. So what we're gonna do as a sports community is pay for the cost of the, and get you those driving lessons. No, thank you for all you do to inspire us. You're the man, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin. Certainly, we talked in the open about what these last two and a half years have been like. And as you've heard over these last couple hours, I think our community has had its fair share of ups. We've had our ups. We've had our, our downs as well. But you know what we've had more than anything is we've had each other. And that is what makes Team Tampa Bay so special. The ability to showcase our community. We once were the best kept secret around. <laughs> now, I think the world has taken notice of the Team Tampa Bay spirit. So I hope you guys think this was the best ever sneaker soiree. I feel like it was a heck of a championship celebration. That'll do it. So Who's Tampa ready Bay, for the most celebrate. party? Thank you, Sarah, for another great night. We look forward to celebrating again next year.